everything I do from the morning to night is for the sake of Allah. I did my first 20K a month when I was 17, 100K a month when I was 18. Now, inshallah, I'll do my first million a month. Allah, my bad. may God increase you, bro. I remember my dad had sent me like $100 in crypto, mastered the craft of looking at charge, reading charge, predicting markets, making $1,000 a day when I was 16. Ended up pretty much losing everything overnight. It was a blessing because then I realized that what I was doing was pretty much haram. I was like, you know what? This is not what my younger self would have wanted. Me going to university, going to high school. I took took all the time I had and put that into building a SMMA. Came across a bunch of gurus and then that guy ended up pretty much scamming me. At that point, most people would have already quit. If you want to be the part of the 1%, you need to do what 99% of people are not willing to do or are not going to do. I cracked the code on something called paid ads. It was a crazy moment for me. The feeling of 10k a month was way better than the feeling when I hit 100k a month. All right, y'all. So we are back with episode number two where we get people who are different. To say the least. We have brother Amar here, bro. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam, brother. How are you? Good, good, good. I was ready to dive in. Alhamdulillah. Yes. All the so, thoughts, all the secrets. Yeah, yeah. So for those of you who don't know, brother Amar is uh, 19 years old. And he makes over 154K per month with his agency. Allahumma barik. May God increase you, bro. Now, I want to give the floor to you in the beginning. I want you to... Just tell us your story, bro. Tell us, tell us how this all came about. For sure. I'll dive into, I guess, how we got started, how you guys could get started and kind of relate your journey with me and how I kind of tied Islam and used that as the main focus while I was building the business, right? Which is the ultimate reason why I succeeded in the first place. So obviously 154K, I hit that when I was 18. So I'm going to bring those numbers, uh, I guess, to when I was younger. So I, I did my first 20K a month when I was 17, did 100K a month when I was 18. Now, inshallah, I'll do my first million a month. That's the goal when I'm 19. I just recently turned 19. So I'll kind of dive into my backstory, how I got started up into the space and share my journey. Ever since I guess I was younger, uh, I've always been in the entrepreneurship space. I've always tried drop shipping, selling candy at school. And everything you possibly think of, you know, when it comes to hustling, making money. And I always had this, I guess, mindset that I wouldn't want to work for someone or I wouldn't want to live, um, you know, working for someone. Right. It's also encouraging Islam to own your own business and stuff. And then I remember my goal was to be known as a high school dropout. I remember that was one of my first goals because I saw these guys online making money, you know, watch all these youtubers and stuff and i was like man i want to be one of those guys or i want to help other people make money this is before i even made any money I, like i was broke and then you know pretty much spent majority of my time just um working on side hustles watching youtube videos on how to make money and when covid rolled around that's when i guess i lost my sense of i guess grind and i started pretty much playing video games 10 hours a day i lost my purpose. I was pretty much morbidly obese at that time. Like I was really fat. And then I'd say this is 2020. When 2021 started 2021, that's when I got into self improvement, right? So I would, you know, started getting into shape. I went from like 215 pounds, and I was like five foot six. So I was like, really short too back then. Uh, and then went to around, I'd say 180 pounds, and they kept losing the weight over time. And then through fitness and just dieting and stuff, I pretty much found myself getting into the entrepreneurship space, right? Because I was improving myself as a human, but I was still broke at that time. And then I was like, wait, this is the next level, right? Getting into money making, actually building a business. And that's when I got into crypto and crypto was a blessing and a curse at the same time. So pretty much I remember my dad had sent me like $100 in crypto at that time. And I was like, yo, let me, I have money now. Like I can trade this up, you know, take this thousand dollars and alhamdulillah, you know, at that time crypto was booming. So I took that, took it up all the way up to like $4,000. And since then I traded crypto, I was pretty much every day. I was looking at charts all day. Um, I was pretty much learn and master the craft of looking at charts, reading charts, predicting markets. But eventually, you know, I got too greedy. And this is where, alhamdulillah, you know, I lost pretty much everything I had from that point, pretty much made a lot of money. Um, I was making $1,000 a day when I was um, 16. And this is like peak bull run. Right? And then I ended up pretty much one summer I had 20K to my name, ended up pretty much losing everything overnight. 
which was a blessing because then I realized after that what I was doing was pretty much haram. Um, it was pretty much you're trading futures and there's different ways to trade futures. However, the way I was doing it was haram, right? I was pretty much betting on the market. I was shorting um, crypto. So I'm really grateful for that. And that taught me a lot of stuff, right? And that's, I guess, where my introduction to Islam came, where I, I was always Muslim, you know, religious family. But um, I was never taking Islam seriously. And that's when I was like, hey, like, I need to, you know, focus down, focus on my deen. And that's when I started first time praying five times a day. Right? I thought of praying five times a day as being religious, which is crazy nowadays. You know, if you pray five times a day nowadays, you're pretty much considered religious. It's insane. Because it's um, considered extreme. Yeah. <laughs> In some cases. Yeah, definitely. From there, I remember I was... I'll just fast forward a little bit. So I was in the I was in eleventh grade, and I was going to twelfth grade. Right? And at that time, I pretty much failed all my classes. I would had like no grades to even show for. And this is like right after COVID, so I had to pretty much go to in person school for the first time and have good enough grades to get into a really good university because that was my parents' mission, their vision. That's you know where they saw me, and I remember. Having no grades, my parents were like, oh, show me where your grades are. You know, you're going to have to go to university next year. I was like, bro, what am I supposed to do? After that, told my parents that I pretty much have no grades. And then at that point, I pretty much had to repeat grade 9, um, grade 10, grade 11, pretty much every course um, in all those grades, right? Just because I pretty much failed all those classes. What ended up happening was I was like, okay, so I have a choice. Either spend all my time grinding um, do every single grade, repeat every single grade again. And I pretty much bought this online course. There's like this online university, online high school where you can buy courses. So I was like, all right, I'll spend this next year just grinding on all these courses, getting the stuff done, getting to a super, um, like a proper university to show my parents. Right. And, and then the other choice was that I go all in on my entrepreneurship journey and focus on that. And then, you know, somehow find success yeah i had to kind of bet on myself at that point so ended up happening was i bought all those courses i was going to start my grind i chose the studying lifestyle and then a month in i was like wait what am i doing and i thought back to my younger self i was like you know what this is not what my younger self would have wanted right me going to university going to high school going down that academic route and then i pretty much ended up um buying all those courses i was doing the courses online i was going half in school half online and then i took all the time i had outside of studying and put that into building a smma what most people call it right so smma it starts off as an smma and then you know once you're growing it up you call it like a business it becomes a proper business right like an agency proper business but obviously beginner everyone knows iman Gatsi, the guy who's i guess made smma so start off with SMMA and I started researching, hey, how do I build an agency? How do I do SMMA? And I came across a bunch of gurus online. I remember I paid this guy like $1,500 to give me his sauce and stuff. And then that guy ended up pretty much scamming me, took my $1,500. But I wasn't going to let that slide. And I had to bring back my old crypto days because, you know, I just wasn't going to let that slide. And I had some connections. And I remember this guy, he took my money, stopped, just ghosted me. I pretty much banned his Instagram account. So I, I knew some guys that could do some stuff. And then I banned his Instagram account. I told him, yo, I just banned your account. So I was messaging him on WhatsApp. And then he was like, yo, I'm sorry, you know, take your money back. He pretty much refunded me the money. I didn't unban him because a lot of people, um, he, scammed, he scammed a lot of people. So I was like, yo, refund all these other guys. And then, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. So fast forward, uh, I got scammed first ever time getting into the space, you know, learning about running an agency, I got, I guess, scammed already. And, you know, I was like, no, I have to keep going, right? Most at that point, most of the people, most people would have already quit, right? So one thing I always kept in mind throughout my entrepreneur journey is that if you want to be the, let's say the part of the 1% of people when it comes to income earners or entrepreneurs in general, you need to do what 99% of people are not willing to do or are not going to do, right? So I know that majority of people in that case would have already left off, right? Went back to their studying journey, 
um, you know, going to focus in school. This thing just isn't cutting it. You know, this, this the whole thing is a scam. But I had kind of to reshift my mindset and be like, no, most people at this point would have quit off. I'm going to keep going. Ended up um, just going into the SMA route, bought a bunch of programs, bought a bunch of courses. And at that point, you know, I always believed in investing in yourself and investing in yourself means, let's say, you know, buying mentorships, programs, courses, and just learning from people who have already done the thing, just taking their stuff, basically copy pasting, but then innovating on yourself, right? Um, what people do is they copy paste and then they end up, you know, failing because, you know, they're already doing what the other person was doing, right? So I pretty much copy pasted, bought a bunch of courses, um, programs. I remember I had, at that point, I had $6,000 left to my name and I put that entire $6,000 into this program and invested into a coach. And that was like one of the best investments I've ever made in my life. What happened was I did have $0 after that. Uh, I was basically selling people. Um, I was basically selling services, offering to work for free for some people that are, were already running their SMA just because I had no money. I wanted some cash flow so I could take that cash flow, invest into this email marketing system, which you can reach out to clients. Um, and stuff, right. So I pretty much had, there were some startup costs involved, which, you know, I, I didn't have any money at that point. So pretty much ended up working for some people for free, delivered some value, um, was there, you know, assistance. And I remember I had like $500 to my name. And then after that is pretty much history, right? So I had $500 to my name, built a cold email marketing system. So I would start cold emailing other businesses in order for them to hire me as a marketing company and do their marketing, right? And I had no idea what marketing even was at that point. I was just reaching out to these businesses and, hey, I'll do the marketing for you. Because my goal was, you know, getting the client first and then figuring out, you know, how I'm going to deliver the service, right? Because I'm always going to do good by my clients. It's just I need the clients first in order to deliver the service. What a lot of people at this point did, and I saw a lot of people that weren't successful in this space, they would pretty much spend all their time trying to figure out how to deliver the service when they didn't even have any clients, right? So how are you supposed to know if it's going to work or not? So my plan was getting a client and then I'll figure it out, right? I ended up building this cold email system, started sending a thousand emails a day to a niche and that niche i selected was medical clinics right so med spas um doctors and stuff and this is fast forward this is january of 2023 right so not too long ago and at that point i reached out a bunch of clinics sent a bunch of cold emails sending a thousand emails a day i was instagram dming a bunch of clinics hey let me do your marketing i had my offer which was 30 patients in 30 days or, you know, we work for free. And I, like I said, I didn't even know what marketing even was. I just stole someone else's guarantee and applied it to my thing. And then soon enough, I came across some guy. He was like, you know what? I'm kind of interested. Called him up. Um, it was the fourth person I called, right? So I, I called a bunch of people. You know, I wasn't that good at sales. And then fourth person I called, I, you know, spoke to him over the phone. I sold him the dream, the vacation. You know, he basically wanted to compete with other practices in, in his area. And he didn't really have a good marketing system. I was like, yo, I got you, bro. Do the best marketing in the space. I got you. And then ended up taking him on to a Zoom call where I pretty much had a whole pitch deck. I would basically pitch him, hey, this is what it looks like. This is what your marketing would look like. And keep in mind, I didn't tell him that, you know, I've never even done this in my life. So I was pretty much selling him on this marketing service. And at the end of the slide deck, I remember I dropped the price. I was at this point, I was like, this guy is not going to sign up with me. You know, he sees like a kid, like I didn't have a beard at back then. So I, was, I looked like a little kid. And this guy is like a proper seasoned business owner that's doing like 200 grand a month. Right. And then got to the end. Alhamdulillah, this guy whipped out his credit card and gave me his card details. I remember charging him $2,000 and it was like life changing. That was like, I was like, yo, I can, I can do this now. It was crazy. Like I remember I had like no money left to my name. All that five, that last five hundred dollars I had, pretty much put it into the marketing system. I, I remember I had like four or five dollars left to my name, and I was on that Zoom call, and now I'm at two thousand. And that wasn't just, you know, two thousand one time. That was two thousand dollars per month that he was going to pay me for my marketing services. And after that, I was like, all right, let, time to figure out how to do this thing. I watched a bunch of videos on how to run Facebook ads, run Instagram ads. Fast forward, I'd say two, three weeks in, I was pretty much spent all that time trying to figure out how to deliver service. Like, man, I need to continue getting more clients, right? Because like I said, another problem in this space is that people will get that one client, stay on that client forever. 
and they'll end up pretty much getting nowhere, right? So I was like, you know, I'm not going to make this mistake because I've already seen people go down this route. I'm going to focus on getting more clients because, you know, my goal wasn't, you know, getting to um, 2K a month, right? I wanted to get to 10K per month. That was my initial goal. And after that, pretty much um, hired some guy to call leads for my client. And he was basically, I paid him $600. He was going to call leads for my clients for a whole month. That guy ended up pretty much ghosting me, scammed me, and he took my money, ran away. And then at that point, I was struggling because I had to call leads for this guy, and then I had to do my own marketing, I had to reach out to clients, and I had to take sales calls. I was pretty much everywhere. I was doing everything at the same time, nonstop working, and I only had one client. So at that point, I was pretty much doing everything, right? So there's multiple stages of running an agency. The stage I was in where it was the hardest, which is, you know, acquiring that first client. I'd say that's the hardest thing. And then, you know managing everything at the same time right so you're handling marketing for yourself you're handling the marketing for your client you're handling the leads for yourself you're handling the leads for your client and it was just like a mess so ended up pretty much um firing that client that client actually fired me you know because no one was calling his leads and stuff so i was like all right screw this i'll focus on a different strategy and i started doing instagram dms to acquire clients i remember i got this one guy um another guy on a call sold him he was paying me two thousand dollars a month and i was pretty much handling all his marketing that guy ended up being like a whale client and you know he eventually became like a six thousand dollars a month client and he took on more locations we took on more locations of his and at that point i was building a productized service right so instead of me going out building a marketing system and doing the marketing for that client I pretty much had the system already built out. So it was just copy paste, right? So I would just um, take some images, copy paste those onto Facebook and it, he would start getting leads, right? So at that point I was building a productized service instead of like a actual service where you actually do everything for him, right? So at that point got that client scaled up um, and then I wasn't calling their leads. So I was basically building a program for their front desk to call those leads close them in and stuff right so after that i realized hey i can actually scale this and take on multiple clients at the time and i had around one team member at that time i had a media buyer someone who just handled the facebook ads and all that stuff right so i started replacing myself from the business that's like the first time i felt like i was actually running a business right even though i was i was like a glorified freelancer pretty much at that point so um ended up Hiring my first employee, and it was pretty crazy. Um, he was some guy in India. I just hate, paid him to do my um, client's ads. And after that, I started, I cracked the code on something called paid ads, which is you running ads to acquire clients for yourself. Right. And that was like, that was like one of the <laughs> biggest thing that's ever happened to me. Right. So um, what happened was I built a marketing system that would target clinic owners to opt into my ads and book a call with me. And I spent, I'd say $2,000 trying to figure out how to do it, wasted a lot of money. And then I finally cracked the code on that. And what happened was I checked my calendar the very next day, pretty much back to back to back calls booked on my calendar with clients, right? So now I didn't have to send all those thousand emails a day, send, you know, 500 Instagram DMs to clinic owners. I would just run my ads. I was spending around $50 a day on ads. And they were just booking onto my calendar, right? So I would just have to show up on those calls, close them on my marketing program. That took off a lot of stress, a lot of work that I had to do at the start. Ended up taking those calls. And I remember within two weeks, I acquired five clients. And that's when I hit my first 10K month, right? This is in um, March, 2023. So, and from January to March, March is when I hit my first 10K month. And from then, you know, it was like Ramadan time. I remember making like this video of being like, you know, it's the first day of Ramadan, hit 10K a month on the first day of Ramadan. It was crazy. And then that was like a, it was a crazy moment for me. I'd say 10K a month was, the feeling of 10K a month was way better than the feeling when, when I hit 100K a month. So here's that. Ended up um, two months later, scaling to 20K a month. And I guess the rest is history, right? So a lot of stuff happened during that time. Um, when I was at 20k a month, I remember I told you this, but um, I had a client success manager that I bought on. We had around, I'd say we were doing around 30k a month consistently at that point. And I remember I bought on a client success manager to take meetings for, to take calls with my clients, people that have already signed up with us. 
And that guy, fast forward, ended up pretty much, um, he was like an agency owner who already ran, ran an SMA, but he failed within his agency. So I was like, hey, let me bring you on. You don't have to worry about running a whole agency. You just focus on this, you know, client management piece. I, you know, I helped him out, brought him on. Um, you know, he came to my house, actually. He flew from Houston, took him out to lunch and everything. And a bunch of shady stuff started happening. So he pretty much ended up um, just like not sharing client calls with me. He would take calls with clients and then everything's recorded usually. And then he would start, you know, saying stuff, oh, the call wasn't being recorded, even though we both turned on the recording feature with um, ourselves. So he pretty much started telling me, you know, calls aren't being recorded. You know, this isn't working out. And fast forward, he ended up pretty much taking a bunch of clients because he built a lot of the relationships up with them and took a bunch of our clients, pitched them on a cheaper um, price for our, our service. Right. So I was charging clients, example, $3,000 a month. He would take them on for, you know, uh, $1,500 a month, $2,000 a month. And since I wasn't talking to any of these clients, he was doing all the communication. So they thought, you know, he was the main guy doing handling all the marketing. So he ended up taking a bunch of clients and making a, a bunch of clients charge back. Right. So what that means is they call their bank and say, hey, this is like a scam charge on my account and stuff. And a bunch of those guys started charging back at the same time. And that what that did was pretty much shut down my payment processor. So I couldn't even fight those chargebacks. Right. So it was like a huge mess that we were going through. And I remember during that time, I had realized like it was a it was one of the it was a blessing for me. Right. Because I realized that, you know, although I was on Dean at the start, I was, you know, focusing on my mission, my purpose, you know, praying five times a day still, obviously, and, you know, going to the masjid regularly, going to talks, lectures. Like I had this kind of shift when I started making all this money, right? So I was making 30 grand a month at 17. At, um, yeah, that's when I turned 18. So 20K a month at 17. And then I was making 30K a month at 18. And then I realized that my intentions kind of started shifting, right? So I was like getting all this money entering my bank account. I was, and then I was like kind of forgetting a lot, if you know what I mean, right? I was like, you know, I'm getting all this money and this just happened over time. You know, it's crazy how shaitan comes to you. And I started forgetting my true purpose of actually building a business. It became more about lifestyle. You know, I wanted to buy this, I wanted to buy that. And alhamdulillah, you know, this stuff happened to me. That guy, those chargebacks started coming in. That kind of brought me back on track. Right. So that's a blessing in disguise from Allah. And then what happened after that? I was like, okay, this is happening to me. Like I, I was like self-aware in that situation. I was like, okay, I'm I'm being tested, right? And I'm also being punished because you know I started forgetting my intentions, my true intentions on actually starting the business. And then pretty much I had all those chargebacks. I remember I had like neg negative 40 grand I had to pay back um to, for a bunch of those chargebacks and stuff. Ended up firing all the clients at that at um, at that point, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take a month off from this business, focus on the try to regain my consciousness, build out a strategy plan, and then get back into it. Right at that point, what happened was I was in like a rut, is what I call it. Right, so these these like a sales rut. I was in a rut where I was like, I don't want to work on this business anymore. I started getting detached from the business. I was like you know what, I don't want to work on the business anymore. Anytime I would sit down to work on the business, my mind would tell me, you know, get up, go do something else, right? Just because of, I guess, the trauma. I, I, I don't know if it's trauma, but I just was so detached from the business and all the stuff that happened, the chargebacks I had to pay off. And ended up happening was, I remember I, I took like three or four months off on the actual business. And, you know, at that time, I took time to focus on myself which I really shouldn't have. I should have got back right away to the business, but um, ended up getting back into the business game November. And November is when I went to a Miami trip and met a bunch of other successful agency owners. And I saw them doing the stuff, I guess, what I was doing. And they were at a way higher level, right? So all those guys were doing like 100 grand a month, 200 grand a month. And I was like, you know what? I need to get back on it. Came back. And this is December when I started the agency back up. And at that point, first time getting in, you know, I was focused. I was I actually set down a mission that I had. So I pretty much put down a document where it was like reminding myself over and over what the true intention of owning the business was, right? Which is, you know, for the sake of Allah, first of all, right? So it would go like, you know, everything I do is for the sake of Allah. Everything I do from the morning to night is for the sake of Allah. And then below that would come, you know, the goals I actually had in mind, 
um, the vision I actually had in mind for the company, how I wanted to treat my employees, how I wanted to treat my team members. I remember December is when I started building the company again and building an actual company, not being like a freelancer or um, I guess employee for my clients, right? And that's when I was like, hey, no, I'm gonna go. How did that actually change for you when you shifted your intention from doing it for the sake of Allah, for the sake of God, versus just doing it for the material success? That's a great question. So I actually fell in love with starting the business again, right? So after I made that like complete shift and like it was like I, I activated a switch. And then after that, I pretty much, you know, started praying Tahajjud every night for my goals, right? So I was like, what is Tahajjud? A lot of people watching this, they're not going to know yeah. what Tahajjud is. So it's basically a night prayer where you can make dua, which is basically, you know, asking God for, um, I guess, how would you frame it? So you ask for anything. Yeah, you just ask for anything, right? Um, you're just asking God, which is a sense of worship, a form of worship as well. So it's basically you can pray it usually late at night. Um, it's usually recommended to pray it right after you go to sleep and when you wake up. So I would wake up um, 30 to 40 minutes before the Fajr prayer. Um, for um, Yeah, I would wake up 30 to 40 minutes before Fajr prayer and then pray to Hajjad. And I knew if I just prayed to Hajjit every night and did the dua for the actual goals I had in mind for the business, I would just maximize my success. And also, obviously, not just the business, but life, health, wealth, um, love, relationships, you know, family, pretty much making dua for all those aspects of life. And then I pretty much set down the goal I had in mind. You know, I wanted to get to that 100K month mark. And the first month, we did around 30K right in December, just getting back into the business. The month after that, we hit 100K. So it was, it was pretty crazy. Um, yeah, we did around 154K. That was our highest month. Um, and then, yeah, it was a pretty crazy mindset shift. I remember after that, you know, um, it, was, it, was, it was a pretty crazy shift. And I think the real shift happened when I actually took Dean seriously and did everything for the sake of Allah, right? So I would read that document every yeah, morning. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Okay, that's interesting. So why did that make such a huge shift for you like first of all why why god bro like there's so many people that are in this uh field of business entrepreneurship and yeah they make money right but they don't have god they don't have religion yeah. so why would you say that has been this uh just next level piece of the puzzle yeah great question so i think a lot of these guys that don't have god or don't you know live their life according to God and they're successful. You know, a lot of Muslim people look up to these guys. And if you really look at these guys, because I've been with a lot of these guys, they're truly empty from the inside. Right? I've been with people making a million dollars a month. Plus one of my other mentors, he's doing around, I'd say a million a month. And he, like, I got to call up him. He's like, bro, I'm empty. Like, you know, I just, I just don't like doing this. And he was like, it was crazy. Cause I was like, you know, this guy is making so much money. He's probably like, you know, living the life. Right? So a lot of these guys you see don't know what truly happens behind the scenes. And if they're making money, they're you know losing out on some sense of life, right? So it's either their family, it's either their inner peace, um, and so on, right? But um, you can't have everything, you know, if you're obviously living according to Islam and not just living according to Islam when you're seeing wins, right? Living according to Islam when you're you know seeing losses as well, right? So me losing a bunch of money, having my company pretty much shut down at that point um forgot to mention that whale client that i signed initially i basically posted a video of me closing that client on youtube you know just for a bunch of people to see and i got like 15k views um in like like a month or so and i pretty much blurred out a bunch of his stuff and and all but somehow someone sent that video to that client uh, i don't i don't know who it was to this day but um, it was some guy that sent that video to this client and that client sent me a message. He's like, hey, I'm going to sue you. And I was like, bro, <laughs> this guy owns a hundred million dollar company. If this guy sues me, bro, I'm finished. And I remember getting on a call with this guy. This guy is screaming at the top of his lungs, right? Because he said some confidential stuff in there. That was another mistake I made. Um, you know, he said some confidential stuff in the actual zoom call i had with him even though i blurred his face and everything he found out about that video someone sent it to him and he was like screaming at the top of his lungs he was threatening to charge back pretty much everything he had been paying us for a whole year right so that's like <laughs> another 60 70 grand that he, he would have he would charge back and i couldn't fight that charge back even though we have a contract 
because my payment process was shut down. And at that point, bro, I was like, yo, what am I, what am I doing? What is happening right now? And then, yeah, at that point is, you know, when I started actually getting even more closer to Islam, because I was like, you know, I'm not just going to remember, you know, Allah during my success, right? I want to remember him during my low times as well. And that was like another mindset shift. Ended up, what happened with that guy was, you know, I got on a call with him. I offered him three months free of our pro, of our service. I was like, yo, these are all the numbers. We made you this much money. Um, you know, I deleted the video and everything. And then, you know, we got back to terms and stuff. But it was That's crazy. crazy. It was crazy. That's at the crazy. Point, bro. I, was, I remember being on that Zoom on that desk. I was like, bro. You're shitting I was shitting yourself, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. But uh, yeah, ended up coming to terms with that guy. and. Yeah, it was it's crazy. crazy, man. Because it 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 all boils down to the fact where you have to stay quiet when you're yeah. doing these things. You you can't flex, you can't put it out there, you can't tell people about it. Even the people that you think are close to you, it's like yeah. there's no reason to say, it. right? You let you let your success speak for itself, but like you don't speak about these things because then, you know, in Islam, in the religion, we have this thing known as uh, I believe it's called nazar. Yeah, nazar or hasad. It's yeah. the the evil eye. And it's essentially, it's just jealousy, right? But when someone's jealous and they look at you with this envy, bro, like that can cause some bad things to happen. It does, it does. Yeah, I I've, I, definitely think Nazar played a huge part in, uh, I guess, my downfall. Um, just because, you know, I remember at that point, I was living the life. I was going boating every day. Um, you know, I was just buying crazy stuff. And, you know, I remember posting stuff on my story. And even though... Like I had in my mind that, you know, this is to build a personal brand and motivate other people. There was still that sense of mind where I was like, hey, I want to kind of show off. So I guess, yeah, I kind of want to flex because and show all the people that I guess looked down on me when I dropped out of high school, you know, and when everyone, I guess, didn't support me at that time. Right. They were like, oh, yeah. It's normal. And then I had to, I guess, kind of fix my intentions. Everything, I guess, boils down to intentions, bro, when it comes to yeah. Hundred percent, bro. Bro, so I want to take a step back. I actually have a lot of questions, bro. But yeah, I really ahead, want to hit this thing. <laughs> you had said the whole thing about trauma. Yeah, and I want to speak on that because most people they start to experience success with whatever venture they have in business, and then they experience some traumatic event that, for most, let's say eight out of ten, yeah, it completely just kills everything. It destroys it all. Mm -hmm. right so for myself I, I had the same experience as you where i had a i remember in like three four days i made 10k the first 10k i made in like yeah. three four days i was like oh it's possible <laughs> yeah then i remember in 30 minutes i made like a, a 2k sale and i was like oh yeah you know like your mind opens up you're like wow like these things are actually possible mm -hmm. and then so i had another one which was like 1.5 and Bro, you start getting a little, a little cocky. You start like, yeah, yeah. Dude, all right. bro. I remember I had, I was in a position where I used all the money. And I didn't have the money, and these people they wanted the money back. Oh, and I was just like, oh, sh like what do I do, bro? So it's you know, God, God is the best of planners with all this, man. But it's it's to say that when I had that experience in my mind, I was thinking to myself, ah. Oh, this is, uh, you see, this is why I shouldn't yeah. be doing this. This is why I should just step away from this and I should do something else. And just like you, bro, where you didn't want to sit down, you didn't want to do the business stuff. It's like your mind yeah. wants to like, bring you away from it. That's exactly the same thing that I was experiencing. And I can link it back mm -hmm. to this book that I read a long time ago. Have you ever read The Alchemist? Uh, I actually have it on my shelf right now. I haven't read it though yet. Bro, by Paulo Coelho, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's this story about this guy who is a shepherd and he has this dream, like he literally has his dream repeating. And this dream that's repeating is that he finds his own personal treasure. You know, long story short, he sets out on this, this uh, quest to find this personal treasure. It's called a personal legend in the book. Mm. And at one point he's met with this guy who is a king and the king tells him, look, you're going to, you're going to have a lot of difficulties. A lot of times where, Things are going to happen and it's going to set you back and it's going to make you not want to continue. And it's at that point where you have to continue or else it's all going to be just a dream. And that's all it's going to yeah. remain is a dream. And then he pointed out to this guy who was uh, like a baker. And he's like, you see this guy? 
he's like, yeah, he's like, he's a baker, right? He's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, he's probably making good money. He's like, yeah. He's like, you know what? His dream was to actually travel the world. And he let go of that dream to be realistic and to have a company, have a have yeah. his own business. And then once he had the business, then he was going to go travel. But now he's approaching old age. So now it's like he can't travel and I can't do anything. Yeah. So it's like there comes a point where you let go of that dream or you just go all in. And when he said that later in the book, he reaches a point where all the money he has was stolen. Wow. And so at that point he gives up and he's like in his mind, yeah. he keeps telling himself like, no, this is not worth it. I don't want to do this. But then it's like, he reaches that point where it just something snaps, something clicks where it's like, no, I have to continue. Yeah. And what you're saying with your story, you know, it's uh, it's relatable, but it's also, yeah. it can be found in everyone else's journey with what they're going through. That's true. That's true. And th that's also like a point where I saw that, you know, most people at that point would have quit as well, right? Most people would have, you know, said, you know what, we tried this, we ended up failing. I'm just having to get back to something else, you know, get that nine to five or something. And, you know, that was like, I was like, no way, no way I'm going to do that. You know, after all this time, I know I can still build this up. I still have a solid system in place. It's just, you know, going through hard times. Right? And those hard times are the most important because that taught me more than my success, right? That one failure taught me more than any success could have probably taught me. And um, I was just really grateful because I went through something like that at such a young age. Like I've experienced more things than people, you know, have at the age of like 65, right? Um, in terms of, you know, business success, failures and stuff. And that taught me really good stress tolerance as well. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, you were saying, uh, not in this video, but you kind of mentioned briefly that you had uh, crypto was like a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What exactly happened with that? Because I saw on the other podcast you were, you were going, it was a little funny, I'm not going to lie. but <laughs> Yeah, so um, with crypto, bro, was, I have a crazy relationship with crypto, man. And I always find myself getting back into it. But at that point, I was doing something which is called future trading, where I would pretty much... Um, like let's say if I have a hundred bucks, I would go 10 X on those on, on that hundred bucks and turn it to thousand dollars. Right. And then, so I'd be trading with thousand dollars. And if it goes down um, a little bit, I pretty much end up losing everything. If it goes up, I pretty much, you know, gaining quite a bit. So, you know, I pretty much um, put a lot of money in. I, I put nothing, I actually put nothing in. Um, I took everything from like a hundred bucks and took all the 20 K and then I would pretty much lose everything, gain everything back, lose everything, gain everything back. And I was kind of stuck in the cycle. And every time I would end up gaining it back, I would get cocky and then I'll end up losing it. And then I'd become humble. Right. So it was like this cycle where I wasn't learning from my mistakes. And, you know, at that type, at that point, I wasn't that much into Islam. Like I wasn't, you know, I'd say as on Dean as I am um, normally. But yeah, at that point, I was just not listen, learning from my mistakes and just kept getting cocky. You know, I would, I remember I would be hanging out with my friends and be like, yo, I just made three grand. <laughs> and I just like flex on them. And then, but yeah. My question is what actually, and I think you might have answered it, but it's, it's the question that I have is what actually caused you to start being practicing? Because I know there was a time where, okay, let me get my intention right. So then you really started to bring it back to God and bring it back to Allah. But before you were practicing, like when you were just starting out, like what caused the shift for you? Yeah, so I would say it was all those losses in crypto because I'd have all these losses and make it back. And then I had one big loss where I lost every single penny I had in my account. right? And at that point, I was like broke. Like I couldn't make any money because i didn't have any money to put in and i remember um i had this like gaming setup like this small gaming setup and i would go around the house selling a bunch of stuff so i could get back money to put into crypto I remember uh, i sold a bunch of stuff these guys kept coming to the house my mom was like who's these who are these guys come in the house and then i sold some stuff i remember that i had like thousand dollars and then i put that back into crypto and the very next day i lost everything so i sold all that stuff i had got the money back in my account. And then the very next day I lose all that money. So it was crazy. I was like, bro, what am I doing? Like, this is not meant for me. Clearly the universe is trying to tell me a sign. And then I was like, you know what? I was just, I was just really depressed at that point. Cause 
you know, I didn't have any grades to show for, I didn't have any money to show for. And, you know, I was just known as like a failure. And then I guess that's when I started just praying, right? I was like, you know, let me just start praying. Um, and then I remember I prayed Isha and then like broke down after Isha. It was, it was crazy. And after that, I was like, my goal is to pray five times a day. That was like kind of the entry point. And then after that, I remember after I started actually praying and getting on Dean, that's when I, the agency journey came to me. That's when I started making good money. And that's where I guess all the success really happened, right? After I started practicing. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to keep doing this. And then I um, learned obviously a lot more about Islam, started attending lectures. Um, the speakers would fly down every time from the UK. Like, you know, Abu Taymiyyah would come down, Sheikh Uthman. Um, it was Sunna guy. And pretty much attended a, a lot of these lectures and stuff. And then... Bro, it's crazy that you say that, man, because if you really think about it, every single person is going through this cycle. Yeah. Right? We all believe that we can do it. We all believe that, yeah. oh, it's it's us who's making it happen. So we start going in and then we start experiencing this difficulty, this difficulty, this difficulty. And uh, it brings us to a point where it's like our lowest, lowest, lowest point. Yeah. Right. And then at that lowest point, it's like you're brought there for a reason. Exactly. Are you going to submit? Are you going to put mm -hmm. your ego down and let go and just trust in the creator? Yeah. Right. Or are you going to keep holding on? Are you going to keep holding on to that victim card and yeah. saying, no, no, like I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Exactly. And uh, asking, oh, why me? Why me? Why me? Because eventually what ends up happening is that if you don't submit, if you don't let go and let God take over, then eventually you will get everything that you were trying to get. But it will be at the cost of everything. You will literally give up everything in your life yeah. just so you can have that money. You will give up the relationships with your friends and your family. You will give up any mental health. You will give up your physical health. You give up everything just for the money, and it, and it goes back to what you were saying about this guy who was making a million a month. Yeah, and he said, "I'm just, I'm empty, bro." <laughs> exactly. That's true. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, That's and, and there's just like this mindset that you have to have, which is like complete submission to Allah, right? Um, it's not there's not a tiny piece of you that should rely on yourself, right? So. Um, I have this document right here that I told you that I would uh, read every morning. Uh, I'm going to present it real quick. I don't know if it will show up. Would it show up? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so this is pretty much the document I would read every day before I hit the 100K mark. Um, obviously, complete submission to God, right? Only Allah can allow you to accomplish your goals. Everything goes by Allah. If He wills, it happens. From leaf falling off a tree to you becoming a billionaire. There's the slightest problem. It will only be fixed if Allah wills it to be fixed. Submit and fear Allah. Everything else will fall into place. And then there's self-esteem. Um, Allah in the Quran says, call upon me. I will respond to you. That is a promise of Allah. And Allah never fails in his promise. Right? So um, you have to believe and you have to have that mindset where anything you ask Allah will happen. Right? It could be now. It could be in the afterlife. But it will happen. Right? Um, and then getting rid of my limiting beliefs, you know, you must have no limiting beliefs. The sky's the limit. You can become the richest person in the world and you have prayed and made dua for it. Why would you not get it? Right? As long as your intentions are clear, Allah will not hold back. Just tie your camel, put in the work. Allah will do the rest. You cannot expect to put no input in. Allah will do the rest. This is shaitan making you lazy. Input equals Allah will take care of the output. Right? And then I was like, you know, talking to myself about me having an edge over every agency owner or every business owner because I have the right intentions and I have Allah by my side, right? You have, I have dua, I have tahajjud, the greatest tool in this galaxy and there's no way you won't succeed. Um, that's, right? that's powerful, bro. Listen, yeah, it's just, there's, um, this. bro, if you really think about this, right? Everyone, everyone kind of gets us, yeah. right? The, the, the people who aren't religious, who they, they don't believe in God, they, they know about the law of attraction. Mm. right the law of attraction is uh yeah. your thoughts become your reality yeah. what you do it's equal and opposite reaction and uh if you believe that you're going to get something and you keep working at it then you're going to get it but then there's also people who don't believe that and they say well if i just put in the work then this is going to happen but yeah 
there are intricacies, bro. There are levels. Yeah, exactly. Like just how our eyes, our skin, our heart, our lungs, just how they work and it's at a level which we cannot perceive. Bro, mm. so is this, right? So you have the law of attraction. Or first, we'll, we'll break it down to the most simplest sense. You have someone and they do something, uh, they're putting in action, they're getting a result. That's the most simple sense, right? But then when you break it down a step further, it's like, oh, okay. Well, if you believe that this is going to happen and you're putting in action and, and you just have that belief and you keep moving in that direction, well, then now it's going to happen. Now the, the universe is going to conspire with you. But then yeah. now let's, let's break it down a step further. Who created the universe? Exactly. So the universe is not actually giving it to you. The universe is just everything is working together. That's what that phrase means, that everything is clicking together. Yeah. And happening so perfectly to allow you to do that. And bro, everyone can attest to that. Where it's like you start setting out on something and it's like things happen. You're like, bro, how did this happen? How yeah. did this happen so perfectly? And then that's where you have to break it down to that level where it's like, well, who created the universe? God did. Yeah. So now you have the belief in God. So now you understand, okay, now it's just, I have to believe in God. Now I just have to be right with God. The closer I am to God, then the more this works. Now, how can I actually be close to God? And that's where religion comes in. That's where yeah. it, it just solves the problem, solves the equation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I feel like that's like a piece that no one really puts together. I guess, um, I guess non-Muslims, um, they just can't put that piece together or, and so on. So we're really blessed to be in this position where we actually believe. For real. For mm -hmm. real, bro. Yeah, it's a it's a huge mindset shift. And I made sure to read this document every day. It was like a part of my day to read this every morning before I started doing any work, before I started taking any meetings, and so on. Right. And then I'm like a huge believer in just being like if you want to be a seven figure business owner, you have to be a seven figure human first, right? Or eight figure business owner, eight figure human. And what I mean by that is obviously, you know, there's your religion. Uh aside from that, making sure whatever you put into your body as well, right? So the inputs you're putting in is gonna reflect directly into your business, right? There's this quote, and it's like, how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? So the stuff you do in your personal life, you know, maybe you might wake up and snooze your alarm, you will see that you snoozing your alarm is going to directly affect you and your business. What I mean by that is you'll start, you know, putting stuff off in the business that is gonna hurt you later down the line, right? Maybe you didn't sign a contract with your client, you just took him on, um, as a retainer and that client ends up charging back, right? So small inconsistencies in your life in your personal life are directly going to affect your business, right? So if you didn't make your bed in the morning, um, you will see that, you know, stuff is going to be messed up in your business, right? You'll be a little messy in your business. Why they say there's something that they say is like, um, in the CEO world, they say, if you ever want to hire someone, look at their car first, right? If their car is messy, then you realize that they're going to be, you know, messing their work, right? They're not going to be as organized in their work. So how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? The food you put in your body, you know, if I'm eating a Big Mac uh, and then smoking like a pack of cigarettes and then showing up to team meetings, I'm not going to be as present on those meetings as well, right? So I had to kind of completely change my diet, what I was putting in my body, um, the foods I was eating and the right timing, making sure I was waking up, sleeping at the same time every single day. So I had this like, morning routine a lot of people are like oh morning routine and stuff which makes sense you know you don't need to have a morning routine to have a successful business but just having that discipline in your life is going to correlate to having discipline within your business right and why are you making it hard for yourself um by not ha being disciplined right i mean you're just making business harder for yourself you're better off maximizing your chances for success so i did everything possible i made sure the input was as maximized as possible and letting the outcome take care of itself Right. So I had to make sure um, my health was intact. My relationship with family was intact. Um, my dean was intact. And then the outcome, you know, was the outcome that I actually had. Right. And that was, you know, scaling to 100K a month, building a successful company, um, employing a lot of team members, giving them a chance to, um, I guess, provide for their families and stuff. Right. That's crazy, bro. It, it reminds me of this thing that I heard when I was young. I used to work at uh, this one supplement store and the boss he was he was a millionaire bro he, he was you know successful yeah. in that regard and i asked him i was like bro what's what's the biggest advice you would give yourself if mm. you go back in time and he told me he's like everything you do do 100 
Yep. And it, it comes back to this, where even the things that we do on a small scale will affect the things that we do on a big scale. It's like if you're, if you're running an ad or if you're running a, a, an offer for the business, mm. if it works at a small scale, then in theory, it can work at a big scale. Of course, exactly. there's, like, there's things that you have to fix along the way, take care of, but that's, that's essentially it. If it works on a small scale, it'll work on a bigger scale. So if something can affect something like that, well, what about our own life? You know, like imagine, imagine you have this person who they wake up and instead of doing the thing that they have to do, they go off, they just kind of, I don't know, just dick around for a little bit and then they go and do the thing. Just that in and of itself can push everything back so much. I never understood this before. Someone yeah. used to tell me, it was like, oh, if, if you sleep in, because I used to love sleeping in, bro. Yeah. If you sleep in, you could be pushing back your dream three months, six months, one year, three years, five years. And in my head, I was like, how, bro? Like, I'm just yeah. getting a few hours of sleep is not that big of a deal. But it's what could have happened in those three to five hours of sleep that you got. And then also what that could have led into later on, like exactly. the discipline that you developed from that, what that could have done for you at another point, because all through our life, we have windows of opportunity. Yeah. And if you're that's, not ready for it, you're not going to catch it. Exactly. That's why, that's why I don't sleep eight hours. <laughs> um, I sleep six hours. There's actually studies that prove that sleeping six hours sometimes can be better than eight hours. Because if you're sleeping eight hours, you don't complete your sleep cycles, right? You're better off sleeping seven hours and 30 minutes or six hours in some cases. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as long as you stick to six hours every day, I feel like you can make it work. And I get two extra hours in the day to, you know, allocate time to, right? Yeah, that's fact. The only time that sleeping extra is actually proper is when maybe you're sick. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you just, you're really burned out and you need that sleep to recover. Exactly. But realistically, you, you only need six hours to seven and a half hours. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, bro, I have a question now. When it comes to this whole business, right? A thing that many people experience, and maybe not with just with business, but with everything in life, is that it becomes repetitive after a while. Mm -hmm. It becomes very boring after a while. That's what that's what many people don't tell you about business yeah. or about success is that it's very boring. Like it, some, sometimes you do some things where it's like, ah, yeah, that's fun. Or I got a dopamine rush from that. But the rest of it is like grind. Like you, you working out, you see some guy like diesel, bro, it was a grind. Yeah. You know? So how do you get past this? How do you, how do you, when the times where you, you are bored and it's like, no, I have to do this. Like, how do you push yourself to just continuously keep doing that? You know, when you're reading this, this intention is how can you continuously keep doing it day after day that is a great question and i've spent a lot of time figuring this out because there's been moments where um i've been making a lot of money but i just hate the doing the work i just hate showing up staring at my computer doing the same things and you know this has affected me a lot right because at some points i get bored when, when i would get bored i would just you know start scrolling on instagram start getting those dopamine hits and if you look at it from like a high level overview Right? The reason you're bored in your work is because your life outside of work is so fun. And what I mean by that is, you know, you're scrolling on Instagram, you're getting those dopamine hits, you're going on TikTok, um, you're watching TV shows, you're eating junk food, right? So if you find a way to make your life outside of work a little more boring, right? So eating, let's say the same meal every day, um, you know, eating at the same time every day. And just spending, let's say, an hour instead of, you know, three, four hours on social media. I'd say don't scroll. Um, that's something that I tell to a lot of people. Don't scroll without a purpose. Don't do anything without a purpose, right? When you're going on Instagram and you're scrolling, you're scrolling without a purpose, right? Just for your brain to get those dopamine hits. Like, you have to be really hyper aware, um, you know, what you want to do on Instagram, right? Do you want to respond to a message that's going to cause a business opportunity, then yeah, go on Instagram. But if you're going without like a vision, a purpose in mind, then you're going to end up doom scrolling, which is going to, you know, give you all those dopamine hits, which is going to make that fun for you. And it's going to train your mind to not like the work, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not saying, you know, live a boring life, you know, just 
eat the same food, eat chicken and rice every day. What I'm saying is that there are seasons to it. A lot of people say that there's like a work-life balance and I don't believe in a work-life balance. If you truly want to build something, you know, if you truly want to build a successful company, you have to have seasons, right? So I'll have seasons where in, I'm in Canada and it's pretty much winter um, from, Octo from October, November, December, January, February, March, and April, right? Those, those are pretty much my grind months. And at, the, at those times, I'll have a crazy strict routine, right? So I'll have um, the exact same routine every day. So I'll wake up at 5 a.m., break the hajjad, pray fajr, and go straight. I'll actually wake up. I'll go straight into um, a cold shower, right? So I'll pretty much turn it all the way to the right. And a lot of people say, you know, cold shower, healing benefits. I don't know if that's true. But the reason I take cold piercing showers is because I hate I hate taking cold showers, right? And it's really hard to take a cold shower. So if you're waking up and you're doing something hard straight away, you know, the work after that is going to feel a lot easier, if you know what I mean, right? So there's just that. And then uh, I kind of forgot my train of thought. What was I saying? No, 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 bro. I, I think that's on point. It actually aligns with this thing that i've been talking yeah. about here on the channel uh, called the uh, dopamine detoxing yeah exactly heard of it right so mm -hmm. essentially you're making your life one where it's just it's more simple so instead of saying oh it's more boring it no no it's just more simple it's more simple yeah yeah like you're not spending all your time doom scrolling you're not spending all your time playing video games you're not spending all your time you know cracking yourself out like you're actually just living a normal life and then you're you're deciding where the dopamine sources are going to come from exactly whether it be from business whether it be from martial arts whether it be from i don't know whatever it is that you want it to be yeah so mm -hmm. my question to you bro is how did you actually do that for yourself i think number one is just environment and not just environment in terms of where you are i mean right now i'm in i'm in my mom's basement right i'm a, I'm a guy building a company for his mom's basement I mean, my family's basement but um I pretty much built this whole thing to be tailored towards my work, right? So um, pretty much setting myself up for success, right? So um, the way it works is I would have the same routine every day and then I would have different cues, right? So on my calendar, my day is planned A to Z. So I know what I'm going to be doing. I have purpose in my entire day, right? What I'm going to be doing for every hour of the day. And the biggest problem people do is I guess the biggest problem in most people is that they don't have a structure on how they would set their day, right? They go to sleep not knowing what's going to happen the next day. So I usually have 45 minutes right before I sleep is when I plan out my day A to Z. And then when I wake up and, you know, I'm all groggy and don't know what's happening, I pretty much know exactly what I need to do. Right? My, I've already set myself for success the day before. So I know what my day is going to look like. I know what I'm going to do, what tasks I'm going to focus on. And just setting up yourself for success in terms of environment, right? So, like I said, organizing your day and knowing exactly where you're gonna do it every time. So the way my day looks like is I'll wake, I'll sleep from around eleven fifteen to five fifteen. I'll wake up, um, I'll do my prayers, obviously take cold, that cold shower, uh, go through my morning routine where I go through my document that I just told you about. Um, I'll fill out my daily workflow. Right, so I have a daily workflow. Did I do this t the night before? Did I do this? Did I take a cold shower? I'll make sure to fill out that sheet. And then I'll go straight into deep work. Right, I'll work for around two and a half hours, just straight focusing on the hardest task of the day. Right, there's this thing called the eat the frog. I'm sure you're familiar. But it's just, you know, if you had to eat a frog every single day, you know, you wouldn't eat it at night, right? Because in the daytime, you'd be thinking, oh, I'm going to have to eat that frog. I'm going to have to eat that frog. You wake up, first thing you do is eat that frog and then you get it out of the way and then your whole day is, you know, spend less stress, right? So I'll, I'll do my hardest tasks in the morning, the stuff I've been pushing. I'll do those tasks and then I'll go straight to the gym. Uh, spend around two hours there, you know, reward myself by going to the gym, right? Because of the hard work I did. And then go to the sauna, steam room, whatever. And then I'll come back and then I'll go straight into meetings. And then from there, Actually, I go, I've changed up a little bit. So I'll do another session of deep work, um, do for two and a half hours. And then I'll go straight into meetings and take meetings from um, 1.30 p.m. to around 8.45 p.m. Obviously, in between then, I eat, one of my, I eat my first meal. And then uh, I'll do my prayers and everything, go to the masjid. I, I don't go to the masjid for all my prayers. 
but I'll go for, let's say, two, three pairs a day. So there's that. Um, just setting your whole day for success, planning everything out beforehand. So you wake up with a purpose and so on. And then, like I said, my day looks the same every day. And I feel because I have seasons, right? I'll have seasons where I'll wake up not knowing what I'm going to do. Maybe in the summertime, you know, maybe we'll go boating every day. Uh, maybe if I'm on vacation. And what I find is that I'm when I'm going to bed after the day I've had, I feel more fulfilled, more happy during the days where I actually get a lot of work done. I get stuff done. I have a productive day. Right. So in a sense, it's not that boring because I love, you know, going to bed knowing that I did everything I needed to do that day. Right. So that, in a sense, is more fulfilling than waking up, going jet skiing or boating or um, going to dinners and stuff. For me personally, it definitely took a bit to get there, I'm sure. So tell me about the seasons again. Uh, you, I think you kind of cut off, you lost your train of thought, but how does yeah, that really yeah. look like for you? So I'll pretty much spend um, all those months that I mentioned, right? So around October, um, November, January, December, January, February, March, April, just like straight one season, everything doing, having the same routine every day, focus purely on work. And then um, I'll have like two, three months where I'll be, you know, focusing on some other stuff, not the entire, obviously I'm still running the business, right? It's not like I'm taking a break from the business, but I'll just be not as organized, right? And kind of have my phone, I'll spend a lot more time with family and so on. So I believe there are seasons, you can't just have a work-life balance. So I'll have seasons where I'm just straight, everything work, 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 um, having the same day every day. And then after I'll have like, let's say a season, maybe two, three months max, I'll go just, you know, doing, I guess, whatever I want, maybe staying up late a little bit. And I usually find I'm, when I'm in that season where I do whatever I want, I want to get back to my grind season usually just because of how much more I enjoy it. It, it kind of makes me think that this happens without us even thinking about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like we'll, we'll be going hard with our work or something that I know we're taking this break. But then as we're taking this break, we're just like, oh. I actually want to get back into it yeah right we feel like we need the break we do the break and then we're like okay now i need to get back into this mm -hmm. exactly and that's when i'll have to do like another dopamine detox um just because you know i'd be scrolling at times i'd be on social media more and stuff and that's i guess the biggest reason why most people right now don't succeed right because of how boring it is and it's not boring it's just that your brain is so like i guess what is the word for it your brain is so stimulated that you know when you're doing the work obviously you're not going to be as stimulated compared to when you're scrolling on social media seeing a new video every you know 10 seconds mm -hmm. right so people need to kind of reset their brains go on that dopamine detox and then you'll find that over time you're going to be like so excited to do your work you'll find you'll get released dopamine while you're doing the work now bro how much time are you actually spending with your family when you are in the game time season Okay, so I'll um, I'll usually wake up. So I'm, I'm I'm in game plan season right now, which is kind of crazy. I took it a little more extended, but um, I'll wake up around five a.m. All the stuff I told you, nine a.m. And I'll see my family for the first time when I'm eating. Right, so when I'm eating lunch, I'll usually go upstairs, you know, get my lunch. Alhamdulillah, you know, I don't have to worry about food. Uh, I'm obviously tracking all my calories, all my macros, all that stuff. And I basically trained my mom to know how to track calories, track macros. So I just send her um, exactly how many calories I need to eat. And then she make the food according to those calories, those macros, the protein and stuff. Right. So um, she usually make that lunch. She'll give it over to me. I'll speak to her then. And then dinner, I'll usually eat dinner with my family. Um, so those times I'm pretty much with my family. And then I'll, I have Sundays completely blocked off. So I'll work pretty much six days and then Sunday I'll have pretty much blocked off completely where I'm not thinking about work at all. Cause I think it is better to actually take time off so you can, um, I guess kind of think outside of the business. Right. And also help. I, I, I get my best ideas during that time as well. Right. When I'm not actually working. Mm -hmm. So I'll have Sundays pretty much blocked off completely. I'll just spend time with family, take them out to dinner um, and stuff. So. That's proper. Now, what about people who are listening to this and they're like, yo, that's a, it's a little monotonous. <laughs> and it's like, repeating, 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 repeating. And uh, what if this person is coming from a place where they want to spend more time with yeah. their friends and their family, but they also want to succeed with the business? Would you then say that now they have a decision to make? 
that's a tough question so i mean obviously it's it's gonna be different for everyone right i don't have a wife inshallah yo <laughs> but um oh, uh inshallah but it's a little different for everyone right because you can't just have a wife and just spend all day pretty much working right you're like i'm working i'd say 10 11 hours a day and obviously you know you don't need to work 10 11 hours i'm just doing this because i want to speed i want to have success fast right um because i believe that a lot of people say running a business is a marathon and i kind of disagree with that i say business is a sprint right your competitor is always going to be out there using the same strategy trying to figure out your strategy implementing um building their teams and stuff right so i believe business is a sprint not a marathon um you know the i really that's one of our core values for a company right it's called speed is king is that if you get an idea and you validate that idea you're implementing right away right if you're not implementing right away you're breaking a core value of our company and we just don't accept someone breaking core values at our company right so implementing right away because the cost of inaction is far greater than the cost of action and failing right so you're better off taking that action implementing and failing learning from your mistakes and when you learn from your mistakes you now know what not to do and then you know taking action again and getting it right for the um, second time right compared to if you just didn't take that action and your competitor took that action they failed then they figured out a strategy that is way better than your strategy you know they're going to get far ahead of you which is going to push you down you know you're not going to get as much clients as that competitor they're going to be a um they're going to be leading in the industry right but going back to your question in terms of work life balance um obviously you're not going to work you know as crazy as me 12 hours because i don't see myself working as crazy myself right now right i realize i have an advantage I don't have people depending on me as much. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I can take all the time, spend that into growing a business, which is why if there's like, you know, any teenagers watching this, like you guys don't have time. You need to get successful, you know, stop listening to what universities and um, I guess the traditional stuff tell you, you know, you have time to figure out what you want to do. No, implement now. If you don't, you're going to spend the rest of your life, you know, working a dead end job. And so, on, right? so instead of spending all that time, going to these parties, hanging out with um, people that just aren't motivated in life. You spend that time actually building something and then you can sp take the rest of the time off and enjoy it. Right? So that's what my goal is. I, I was more proactive instead of reactive. So I was like, hey, I'm living in my family's house. I don't really have any expenses. Um, my family's doing pretty well. You know, they're taking care of themselves. Um, I was like, you know what? I have all this time. You know, I don't have a family to take care of to actually focus on the business, right? So I don't have that crazy responsibilities. So I pretty much spent all that time and I am currently spending that time building this business so that when I do have a wife and children and family to take care of, I won't have to work as hard. Right? Obviously I'm gonna work hard, but not as hard as I am right now. So I'll work, let's say eight hours a day or nine hours a day and then come back to my family at seeing them at the end of the day. It's not like a lot of mistake a lot of people do, a lot of these entrepreneurs that I know do as well, They'll spend all their time with their family. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'm qualified to give this advice, but um, you start losing attraction from each other. It doesn't become as special. I because I remember my time when I was younger and my dad would go to work and then come back at the end of the day. That interaction would be so much better than him just being with us at all times. Right? You'd see him, you know, you see he put in the work and then he sees his wife and he sees his kids and I wouldn't work at home as well. Um, I would find an office somewhere, even though I run my own company, I would find an office somewhere where, you know, I actually come back. Right? So it's like same thing. The old times, you know, the men would go out to hunt, they would get their kill and then come back and see their families. And then it would be a more rewarding experience. Yeah. I think that's something that not many people yeah. realize. And, and I think this is something that we just, anyone can fall into that. Right? Yeah. Any man can fall into that because, well, let's say you have an online job. It's, mm -hmm. it's very nice you could work from home it's not exactly. a problem right you have uh your woman or you have kids or something like this is you can spend more time with them so you think ah exactly. plus i can spend more time with them but realistically they don't want that exactly they might say that they want more time with you but what they want is they want your presence exactly not exactly. just you being there they want your presence like you yeah. actually fully like being present with them like look when i was young bro my mom and my dad they got divorced 
Mm-hmm. So my dad, he I only saw him a, a few times in the year. Yeah. Now, even when I saw him, I was seeing him for like two months out, out of the, yeah. the year, right? But in the two month span, I think a total of maybe like three to five days was all that I could remember through the entire two months. Now, why is that? It's because yeah. in those three to five days in that allotted time, that's when he was actually present. Yeah, exactly. Not just there, but he was present. And that's what we want. We want presence. And the more someone is around you and they're not present, it's like, well, that almost feels like they're disrespecting you. It's weird. Exactly. You feel like they're disrespecting you because they're not fully there with you. Exactly. And on top of that, you start disrespecting them because they're just a commodity. They're always yeah. there with you. Exactly. You know, it's like, what exactly are they doing in their life? Yeah. That's why, like, it's a huge mistake most people make. They spend their off time or they'll be in the same room with their spouse and they'll be let's say doing another activity right they'll be let's say on their phones together and that's like a huge way to lose attraction within each other you know if you're in the same room with your spouse you should be present at that time if you're not then that's when you do your own stuff and so on i think there's a a very big learning curve for Mm -hmm. every single man that's why most marriages don't work out right because a lot of these guys, they don't realize this stuff beforehand. And then you get comfortable. Exactly. Because um, I've seen a lot of people that I know, they'll get married, they'll they'll be on their grind, they'll be going to the gym, they get married, they end up getting fat, and then Facts. they get comfortable. Right? Facts. Bro, so that actually brings me to my next question. All right. How did you detach from the outcome? That's a big question that I always ask people who I see that are actually succeeding with this because you can get to, you can get attached to the outcome of losing everything. Like, Oh, I don't want to lose everything. I don't want to lose everything. And then from your experience so far, you can say that, you know, your, uh, the times that you failed in crypto or the times that you've been screwed over by people and scammed, this, this has been you breaking that detachment or breaking that attachment, I should say. But now in terms of the attachment to success, like, how did you break that attachment where, you know, whether you have it or whether you don't have it, it doesn't change anything? That's a great question. So I'm detaching myself from the outcome, right? So instead of saying, you know, I want to build this company to make money, um, I had to kind of go more internal and realize why I kind of started in the first place, which was, you know, changing the world, right? You know, it's kind of cliche was helping other people become the best version of themselves and attaching myself to that vision, that mission. And then in the short term, you pretty much get detached from the outcome of this business, right? So I'll have a goal for this business that I'm currently running, which is to um, be the number one business in my current niche and um, basically provide for employees that I have under me, which then they're going to provide for their families um, and so on, right? So having a bigger vision, not just focusing on the outcome of your business, because eventually when you do get the outcome, you'll pretty much burn out and you won't be as motivated to work on the business. Right. Cause I had that happen because, you know, when I did hit that hundred K I did become a little detached. Right? I was like, wait, what an hour. Um, but now obviously, you know, I'm back to it on the ground again, but yeah, detaching yourself from the outcome, I'd say is probably the most crucial thing someone's going to have to do in um, their business life. Right. Cause they'll find out that once they do get that outcome, they'll get depressed after. Right. Um, and like I said, having the bigger vision in mind and actually, you know, enjoying the progress, right. Enjoying the day-to-day stuff, enjoying your daily habits that you do. Um, cause right now, you know, I enjoy my day so much that I would do this even if I wasn't really making money, right. Working on something, working on a mission, a purpose, having that true mission, purpose, living, breathing, um, that mission and purpose that you would have. Yeah. Right? yeah that's the sustainability factor of it. Mm-hmm. Man, that's uh, that's very interesting stuff, man. Very interesting yeah. stuff. <laughs> it's uh, it. no, go ahead. No, I said it is a huge mindset shift, right? Because you're like, wait, like I'd be building a business to make money. You know, who cares about building a team, building a company, getting building a solid product for your, mm-hmm. um, you know, for your clients and stuff, right? Yeah, but how do you evolve this? Like over time, when you have that vision, how do you evolve the vision? Right? Where it's like, okay, well, I'm doing it because of this, but 
eventually you're going to accomplish that. So you already have to have the next thing coming. Exactly. So I guess after that, I mean, I'm not at that point. I've, I'm nowhere close to achieving my mission vision. Um, but I guess we'll have to see <laughs> when I get there. That's interesting, man, because I know this guy who was telling me he went out to Thailand and he became friends with this one fighter. Yeah. And the fighter was, uh, from what I remember, is that uh, his parents died and he wanted to be the professional fighter. He wanted to have the belt. His dream was to have the belt. Mm -hmm. Now, he had been fighting his entire life and then he was going into one of the uh, events or if you win the belt, you win a million dollars. Now, this man didn't care about the belt. Oh, I've he heard of this story. I actually should? love this story. You've heard the story? Yeah, I've heard the story. Are you, I don't know where I've heard it from. Are you sure? Yeah, and then he gets the belt, and then he becomes a champion, and then he like cries in the car after. Oh, after yeah. After, or something like that, right? Yeah, that's the story, bro. Yeah, keep going, keep going for the viewers. Yeah, so he... He ended up getting the belt and he was just in his car crying, bro, because he, he didn't know what to do now. He's like, my, my entire dream, my entire mission was to get the belt. Now what? Now what do I do with my life? Mm -hmm. No, so that's why I asked the question, bro, because it's it's not something we think about. It's not something like, oh, I understand that once I achieve this, I need to have something else set. Yeah. We did just you think, mention, oh, no, go ahead. Did you mention this somewhere else? Ah, bro. I think I, I, think I might have heard of you, actually. I'm, if you said yeah, no i i when i did mention it to you but we were talking on the phone like maybe a month back or something oh like that. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i was like bro how does yeah, he know yeah. the story i was like this is yeah, not like yeah. a public story i was like yeah. am i am i am my sources wrong bro like did he get this from like public no yeah i remember you because i remember you said it it was either on a podcast or no no, no this, this was had. us this was yeah. us on a call okay yeah, that's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Okay, now I have a question for you. Before we start to bring you back into uh, what you're doing now, because I'm very, very interested into what you're doing now. Uh, but if you had, if you were in a position right now, and I, this is like for myself, but for other, the viewers, bro. If you were in a position right now where you didn't have the business that you have, right? You had a few resources here and there. You didn't have that much money, but you wanted to make 20K in one month. How would you do this? Awesome. So first of all, I'd look at the skills you would have. Let's say if you have no skills at all, it would be learning a skill. But before that, I would have the complete mindset of going all in, right? Going all into something, not, you know, having, you know, I might start a business, you know, I might not. Okay, I just have I have this a side hustle. There's no such thing as a side hustle, right? I want you to go all in to what you're going to do, and then eventually it will work, right? Having that mindset that you know maybe my work won't work in a year, because um, if you detach yourself from the outcome and say that hey, I'm just gonna spend this X amount of time, I'm just gonna spend a year, I'm just gonna spend um, two years on uh, just focusing on this one thing, eventually the outcome will come, right? If you um, eventually, if you work on something, eventually you will see results, right? There's no way you won't see results. So first of all, having that mindset and knowing that it might take you a month, it might take you a year, it might take you two years, but all you know is that you're going to put in the work, you're going to show up every day and put in the work. Right? And then it's finding a skill which you want to hone down in on and provide value to, right? In this case, if you, would, let's say, start an agency, it would be, you know, finding a niche, right? So if finding what niche interests you. So it could be helping gyms acquire more um, fitness, uh, I guess, helping gyms acquire more members, right? Then you could reach out to gyms and say, hey, um, I'll guarantee you X many members in X many days. And then do, I guess, what I did, sell them first, get them on as a client, and then figure out the results. So I would say just put all your time and energy into one thing. It, eventually, it'll work. Okay, so... What if someone had an opportunity mm -hmm. to work at this job and they have the potential to make, I don't know, maybe could be like minimum 4K, maximum like 20, 30K, but it would take a lot of their time and it would make this, this thing 
that they want to focus on essentially become a side hustle. Yeah, they couldn't be focusing on it full time because now they would have to focus on the opportunity that is present. Would you take that opportunity, or would you actually do the hard decision and let go of the opportunity in order to go all in? That's a great question. So a lot of people do get stuck at that trap where I'll, I'll talk about something in the agency space right now. So what's happening is a lot of agency owners that started an agency or a business um, during the same time I did, I'm seeing that a lot of them are now dropping off and becoming a closer or a full-time appointment setter for other agency owners. Right. Mm -hmm. And majority of times is that I'll, I'll even tell them straight to their face. I'll be like, this is cope. You're coping that you can't take the pain of building a successful company. So you're basically saying, Hey, I'm just going to be a closer. Right. And the reason for them becoming closer usually is, Hey, I'm just going to get some more experience, learn some more skills, sharpen my skills. It's a lot. And yeah, they'll end up becoming a closer and shutting down their agency because they couldn't handle the pain. Right. And then I've had this, this has happened to so many people I know, people that started the agency with me. Um, and then they end up becoming closer, which is a lot easier. Sure, you're like 10K a month, you know, without just taking a bunch of calls every day, but you're not going to build something crazy, right? And so, like I said, it really depends on what your true goal is. But if it's to truly build something big, which I think everyone should have, you know, building something big and focusing on a mission, a higher mission, higher purpose than yourself. Um, yeah. So I would say, what was your question again? The question was if they had that opportunity if they to had work the opportunity. at a different job. Like for you, if you were in this situation, you knew that, okay, I can go all in yep. into this thing that I've chosen. Or I can put that as like a side thing. And I can devote most of my time to this opportunity which showed up, which I can make anywhere from like 4 to 30K per month. Mm -hmm. Depends, right? But it also depends on the amount of energy yeah. and time that you're investing into this thing. Mm -hmm. So the question I, was, would you take that opportunity or would you just go all in? It'd be a little biased for me because I have all the skills to build the business. So even if my company got shut down and went under, I would get it back up running in the next 30, 40 days. But if you don't have that many skills, I know for a fact that if I had that opportunity of working that job, because I did at that point, right? Because I had that opportunity when I was, you know, making three, four or 5k a month. And I got presented with other people trying to get me to close for them. I'd be easily making 10, 15, 20k a month profit. Right? Cause at that point I was making, um, 5k a month, but that wasn't profit, right? That was revenue. I'd be taking, let's say 2k a month. Um, but I need that, you know, if I just put in the work and actually it will come eventually, it will come eventually, right? It's just delaying the gratification. Bro. So that actually leads me to the next question, man. So, uh, at one point you said you were buying courses or buying like into mentorships or uh different programs so you can learn right learning is a very very important thing that i've been realizing along this way and you you have said that you really recommend that people find someone who has the knowledge and then either one you you pay with your time or you pay with money right depending on which one you can do and what's available to you but now the question that i want to ask you is how much time do you devote to learning things because I've heard of people spending, they'll spend like five hours a day learning skills. Yeah. And then when they actually work, they'll only work like one to three hours. But in the exactly. one to three hours, they're implementing everything that they've learned in yeah. the five hours. So it's kind of like that that whole principle of, oh, you're giving, you're giving an axe as yeah. dough and you have seven hours to chop down a tree. And you spend five hours sharpening the X and then two hours actually cutting the tree down. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I would say investing in myself has been a huge, huge, huge benefit for me. Um, so a lot of people hear this word invest in yourself, right? What does that actually mean? And that's basically paying other people that are where you want to be and basically paying them for the knowledge and I guess having them give you a framework in terms of what to do and what not to do, right? So what they'll do is they'll save you a ton more, a ton of more time, a ton of more money, um, and basically telling you what not to do, right? The failures that you would usually have when starting a business. And they just tell you, give you the roadmap, 
and that allows you to achieve things ways faster, right? You're able to implement, you have a clear direction of where you want to go to. And, you know, that's how I started, right? Like I said, I had that last $6,000 to my name, but when I spent those $6,000, I gained skills that are now, you know, making me like over hundred grand a month, right? And I continuously, you know, I'm still to this day, I'm reinvesting in myself. I'd say spend like 10 grand a month just paying for people's times, right? So I'll go to someone that's uh, higher above me and be like, hey, can I pay for an hour of your time? You know, basically extract all their knowledge. Um, I buy courses, I buy programs. Um, I, I'm i basically joining mentorships of people that are a lot higher than me. And yeah, so I would say investing in yourself is huge. You know, even if you, I'd say if you have money and you don't have the skills, I would spend that money to acquire those skills, which will then, you know, lead you to building an actual business and using those skills to actually go back up. So I would, I would actually say that, you know, if you have money to start off with, which a lot of people do, right. A lot of people, um, you know, for someone's watching this podcast, they have, let's say five, 10, 15 K invest that in yourself in terms of find out what you really want to do and then find who's already doing it and pay them to teach you or find a coaching program or a mentorship and acquire all those skills, extract all those skills, and then just implement straight away. That'll save you a lot more time, effort um, in the future. It reminds me of uh, all these people that I hear that are successful. And yeah, they say exactly. that uh, yeah. if they were to lose it all, yeah, if they had a phone, then they could bring it all back instantly. Yeah, And it's uh, it all goes back to the skills, you know? if. If you know how to build a business and you lose your business for well, you know how to build it, you can build it right exactly. back. But if you had it built for you and then you lost it, well, what are you going to do? Exactly. You know? Now, bro, with that, I guess I want to, I want to, I had other questions, man, but I definitely want to know uh, what it is that you're doing now. Because you've been doing the SMMA, but I know you were telling me that you wanted to start to branch out and start to create a more personal brand type thing because you want to share this knowledge, these skills with people so that people can actually start leveling up in their lives. Oh, that was the question, bro, which I'll, I'm just going to write it down and I'll ask you after. Inshallah. Sounds good. So, I mean, right now for me, the plan is to grow this company and to be the best company in the space in terms of my niche and continuously hiring because I'm at a point where I'm just basically... Um, instead of me doing the day-to-day -day work, I'm just basically focusing on hiring talent, acquiring talent, and, you know, leading the team, right? Being that leader, um, making sure everyone's following the core values and so on. And then some sales management here and there. I'll manage my sales reps, all that good stuff. But eventually, the mission is to kind of replace myself within my company and then focus a lot more or maybe sell the company and then focus more on, I guess, helping other people get to where I've gone to, right? So helping my younger self, so me, let's say two, three, four years ago, help my younger self get to where I am now without all the, I guess, failures and so on, right? That's mm -hmm. something comes to personal brand. You know, I started making some content, helping other people get to where I am now, but more in an Islamic way, because um, there is a lot of people teaching this stuff, but a lot of their ways of doing things are on Islamic and so on, right? So. Um, I would never charge for information. I would charge for implementation, right? So if someone would want to scale their agency, um, they would join, let's say, an example program of mine, hop on calls with me and a bunch of other guys and build their businesses and so on, right? So I wouldn't charge for knowledge. I would just charge for implementation and give pretty much as much value as possible for free. And then, you know, if they want to work with me, you can pretty much go to my program. But yeah. It's very proper because most people nowadays they, uh, I was about to say they, they want to be. Uh, I was going to say a word, but I'm not going to say because heavily, heavily censored on YouTube. But uh, it's it's the J word, you know, the J E W. But uh, they tend to be like that when it comes to information, yeah. right? They want to put like a paywall behind the information. It's like, bro, like exactly. I really wanted to. I could just go on Google, yeah, or just like search for it, and I could find it. Why are you putting a paywall? Yeah, exactly. Like I'll have people will be like, yo, I can't tell you my secret sauce. You know, I can't tell you my strategy. I'll be like, bro, right? exactly, bro. <laughs> I can just find it right now. Exactly. Um, like, yeah. That's proper, bro. That's proper. May, may God increase that, man. That Okay, now it reminded me of the question, right? So in the beginning, you had said that you did self-improvement. 
Mm-hmm. What I want to know is how did that lead to all this? Because what I've noticed for every single man is that their success first starts with self-improvement in one way, yeah. shape, or form. They want something to be better within themselves. And then once they start on that path, if they're actually hungry and they keep moving forward, it leads to their success. Mm -hmm. So I I used to play like a lot of video games and, you know, I'd be obsessed with the ranking up in those video games, achieving a higher level. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would, I I would kind of tie that to life. So I'd be like, okay, Um, I started off with obviously losing all that weight. Right. It went from like 215 pounds to, 140 pounds and it was it was a crazy i guess transformation because i was like a whole different person at that point right so i i gained the health and then there's health wealth love spirituality um relationships right so i was okay so i've gotten the health down even though i'm not jacked or anything right i've gotten a base level of where i want to get to in terms of health now comes wealth right what do i do now um, and then I was like, you know, I need to find a way to make money. And then I pretty much got the health in check, was going to the gym every day, realized what I need to do to lose the weight, um, come jacked. And then after that came, you know what, like, oh, sure, I'll be jacked, but am I going to be broke still? And then came to wealth, me trying to find out how to make money. And then came the other stuff. So I would say it just leads you to it. You know, if you want to be the best version of yourself, you can't just be, you know, good in one aspect of life. And you got to master all the other aspects. That's facts. That's facts, bro. What time is it? How much time we got left here? So we definitely went ridiculously long, but I think it was, it was good, bro. Very, very beneficial. So well, hopefully, and if, if one person can benefit from this video and change their lives or adapt a new mindset, I'll be happy. Bro, listen. You already got one person, this guy right here. Come on now. <laughs> but no, for real, I, I think it's some uh, amazing stuff, right? May God increase you in your approach with all this because I know you're saying you're trying to scale even higher. You know, so what I want to leave off of right here is this whole personal thing that you are going about doing. Have you started it? Is it in the process? It's is still it in the process. On? So I actually, the way it started, was that people were like DMing me on Instagram. They were like, yo, can I pay for an hour of your time? I was like, yo, what? Why would someone want to pay me to, I guess, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like that for some reason. I was like, wait, you know, I don't want to pay for and, you know, and hide information from someone. Um, but yeah, I got, I, tr- I started helping people. I just realized that, you know, it just helps me be more fulfilled. Like I'm actually doing good in this world. Um, basically, taking my knowledge, passing it down to someone else, that person is going to be the best version of themselves, um, provide for their families. Right? And also it's, you get heavily rewarded for that. So I guess my step is just creating more content, getting stuff out there. Cause there is a lot of BS in the space. A lot of people claiming stuff. Um, and then they end up coaching people when they've never done the thing themselves. Right. So my next step is just getting into the content game, sharing as much value as possible, giving as much stuff away for free. And then to the point where people are like, hey, like I want to know what this guy's about. And then they would join my program. Right. It's similar like Alex Ramosi is giving everything away for free, not holding back even the slightest bit. Yeah, showing yeah. people literally how to do it. And then if they want to get there faster, um, they jump in and join my program. And then for this company specifically, I want to be at a million a month by the end of this year. Um, across my you know month mark by the end of this year. That's a and then continue scaling up from there. I don't know about it, bro. Hello, Mubarak. This is uh, it's very proper, man. It's very proper. I, I wish nothing but the best for you, bro. I'll make dua for you. Appreciate it. If you want, do you want people like some kind of link or something for them to be able to find you? Uh, I guess they could follow me on Instagram. I mean, that's the only thing I really have. Um, Armand Chaz. You probably put it up. I'll put it in the yeah. description <laughs> yeah. box. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sir. I guess people can reach out there. If anyone has any questions, obviously feel free to reach out. I can definitely help um, in terms of, I guess, wherever you're at. Yeah, man, I have many questions, but I think we're good for now. Inshallah, God willing, part two at some point.